everyone, Sophia here for my great challenge. Welcome back to my channel. It's fall. It's one of our favorite season, especially Scott. You know, my thing is Christmas. But this time around, for the fall and for Thanksgiving in particular, we're having family over and friends. So it's going to be a little hectic around here. I want to decorate for the fall, but I don't want to do something so extravagant that we just can't move around. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to scale it down, which when you know me means basically nothing. <laughs> it means nothing because I'm gonna do what I usually do, which is put stuff all over the place. But I'm trying to kind of, yeah, I'm trying to scale it down. So let's see how I manage this year. I did take advantage of the Michael 60% off all of full decor to get some foliage and little decorative items, flowers, things like that because I got a basket and what I want to do this year is a centerpiece um, to put on the table or to put over here when we're not using it on the table. So I have a basket, I have some foam, a bunch of stuff. So first things first, I need to take an inventory of what I already have in my blue bin, which is my full decor bin. So let's get started. This is number one. I am making a basket centerpiece for the dining room. So before you start doing any kind of decorating in your house for any season, you want to take an inventory of what you already have, right? So I have one thick pumpkin. This one I really like. This is a ceramic pumpkin. I think you've seen that before. Okay, my yellow candles. I have this little basket here. I think that was the first year I ever decorated for fall. I had this. Um, I have some fake candles which probably need new batteries. I um, have this one here. All right, these little rings, I use them for my candle holder. This thing here, which is like a wreath. Remember, I had that last year on the table. I'm not going to put it on the table this year. I have more of those. I have this. Oh, I have more than I thought. Okay, a bear candle, which I use every year for decor, never once turned it on because it's real honey um, beeswax. Okay, more of these. All right, these are my fabulous little sprays, but they leave beads all over the place. Uh, we got foliage galore. These which I really like. My Goodwill Challenge. This little guy, remember him? Oh, I love this guy. It's a pleasure to put him out every year. Uh, what else? And then more fake gourds. Okay, so I could just leave all of this on the table and that's it, right? Decor is done. Um, and then these two. Okay, so that's that. Let's see what I purchased. So, at Michael's, I got, remember 60% off, I got one of these because I want some heights on my uh, centerpiece. I got some white ones because I don't want too much red. I got some foam blocks, which you got to use when you're doing some kind of flower display. Um, I got one of these, I got pumpkins falling all over the place, and this one is really nice because it's got the little beads in it. Now, why did I only buy one and not two? Because I plan on cutting them and separating them so that I can, you know, put them on different places. Um, more of these little guys here. And then to tone it down a little bit, because I still want to have all red, I have some white hydrangea, and again, I'm going to cut them. Uh, I have some of these that are already falling apart, because it's not put in the bag properly. And then some of these, and these, and these, 
and another one of those. That's it. Okay, so let me get the basket. I want to get started. So I bought this basket um, at a Goodwill in Smithville, New Jersey, and I paid $3.99 for it, but it was a blue sticker day, so I paid half off on it. We went on a Wednesday night, I think. Uh, so two bucks. <laughs> two bucks. I'm going to say this is my full goodwill challenge, right? Under $5. So it's vintage and it's got the American Eagle on it. And this is uh, metal. And the whole basket is nailed. It's not stapled. If you look around, you can see all the nails. So it's definitely a vintage basket. What a find. So I have the basket and I purchased some of those foams. Um, if you go to Michael's, they're inexpensive and I think they're on sale too right now. They're like two bucks each, I think. The problem with them is that everybody who goes to the store and touches the foam, they go like, ooh, and then they press on them so they all dented. And when I tell you it's hard to find one that's not dented, I'm not kidding. <laughs> because they really are a big mess. So what you do with that is that you can uh, use it in a planter if you want it um, to put flowers and you can wet it but you can also keep it dry and it helps you display flowers in a basket um, and plant them so that way they just don't like fall and it's not just for fresh flowers you can use that for um, silk flowers like I have. So I have to decide what I'm going to put in the middle and whether I want to keep these down or up. And I think I want to keep them up a little bit so that they kind of show. Um, I do want something here. So I think I'm going to put my big ceramic pumpkin in the middle. Um, so let's go get it. Eh, it's too big. <laughs> it's too big. It's taking the whole basket. So I have smaller ones. It's okay. You know, I can't remember where I got this. This may have been a street find. You guys remember? I think it's a street find. Um, all right, so I have a whole bunch of other pumpkins, so let's look for those instead. All right, so, I like this. And this one, should put this, okay. So, I'm gonna, put some kind of paper here to hold them higher. So all you have to do with those big foliage that you get is you basically cut them apart right so I pulled this one out um, and I think I want it a little bit shorter so if I want it shorter you just bend it like this and then you can use a pair of scissors you don't care about there we go and you put that in the foam Right? So it holds it in place. Okay, so got one here. I'm going to put one on the other side. Okay. Next to that, we're going to put some yellow. This is nicer because it goes up. So same thing, you separate it. have to do anything symmetrical like I'm doing. I'm just doing it that way because it's easier for me because I'm not really good at that kind of stuff. Okay. Right. I have these and I have two of them. 
So these I'm not going to cut them, but I will reposition the leaves a little bit. Okay. Don't worry about the pumpkins not staying because what's going to happen here is that the foliage that I put in the basket is going to hold them. That was a great sale. This was 60% um, off and they're $6 each, so I paid $2.50 for them. And I'm going to reuse them year after year, so that's worthy for me. Okay, this one goes here. This foliage we're gonna put some of it here and here this one we're gonna grab Let's see what this looks like for now. It fits right on my little basket here. So I have this side and then the other side. You want it to look good on all sides. So I like this, however, I think there's too much white here at the corner. So I have to break it and bring in a little bit of orange in between. And I I think I uh, have just the right thing for that. Have some left over from last year. I think I'm done and I got rid of what I'm gonna do is add a ribbon right here. So here's my centerpiece and it would look great like this if we didn't eat on this table every day <laughs> because it's a really pretty piece. However, it's a little big and we eat here every day. We don't have a uh, eating kitchen. So I'm going to see what it would look like if I put it over there instead. And that's nice too. However, now it's too high. <laughs> you can't see the pumpkin. so. We're going to find another place to put it on and I think I'm going to go on the other side of the dining room on my little side table. Much better. Now you can see the pumpkins and all the foliage and the baskets. I like this a lot and it's going to stay here until Thanksgiving Day when I have to put um, the food on this little table. Yes, there's a plastic basket. Yes. Um, so now I've got empty space here 
an empty space there and you know I gotta fill those up. Oh that's much better. Okay so it's gonna stay here and I like it. Um, yes there's a mess at the bottom stuff for sale I gotta put it away. Um, so I have my three finds from a couple of years ago and um, those two candelabras. I don't know what they made of. I think it's wood. And my candles which I use year after year. We only um, use them for Thanksgiving I think. Because the other ones are orange but I like the yellow ones better. And that's looking really good. Oh! Looks like my mom is doing FaceTime. Be right back. So I'm happy with the way this looks. Um, I think it's the perfect spot for it with my two candelabras on either side. It's simple, um, it's not too fussy, I've, you've seen me do more fussy than this. So what I'm going to do now is um, show you what I got on Etsy for sale. And um, because I said that I was going to continue to show you, but I didn't want to do like separate videos. So if you want to stop the video now you can, if you want to continue and see what's up on the Etsy shop you can do that. I will see you next time. Next time I am making a wreath for the other side and I think that's going to be it for um, decor for this room for um, fall and Thanksgiving. I told you I'm trying to like really scale it because otherwise you know me this stuff all over and, and I'm, really, I'm really trying to bring it down a notch a little bit only because we're gonna have people over and I just don't want to I don't a I don't want people to suffocate in my house which is already cluttered you know that and two I just don't want to uh, um, do too much I want I want it to be still very open and and still look like fall okay so I will see you I'm yellow boy I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, you guys. Stick around if you want to see the Etsy stuff. Bye! Some of you have said that you wanted me to show you the stuff that I'm getting at various thrift shop, garage sales, and antique shopping throughout New Jersey and that I'm going to post on Etsy. If you're not into that video, I guess that's not going to be for you. I'm sorry, but some of you are interested. So I'm categorizing things today. I'm going to start with pottery because you know I love pottery. And I found this one. Um, I believe that was Goodwill in, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Smithville, um, somewhere around Union, that's where it was, or Plainfield, I'm not sure. Anyway, so I found this one, it's beautiful, it's very well made, it does have a stamp, and for the life of me, I cannot identify it, so if you are a pottery collector maybe you can help me identify this I've reached out to every one of my pottery collector um, group on Facebook and I did reverse image I can find it so this is the first face and it's beautiful it's kind of a soul glaze but it doesn't have the rough texture beautiful leaves on it. it's fairly big really really like it so that's item number one that's gonna go on the Etsy shop this is really unusual. That's a food dish by Stangle Pottery. Um, the pattern is bittersweet and it has this burnt orange flower and foliage on it. It's in excellent condition. There's not even a scratch on it. I don't think it was ever used. So it's stamped Stangle at the bottom. This is oven proof and a lot of people use that as a relish dish but you can also serve rolls in it, hot rolls, you can put it in the oven if you have like a uh, appetizer, you know one of those things that you dip um, bread in, like if, let's say for instance you're making a spinach and cheese type dip or onion and cream dip, you'll put it in there, put it in the oven, it's really pretty. Now it was supposed to come as a set, there was a pair of them and one was missing found that at the Goodwill in South South Jersey and I looked all over the place so that's a Stengel mid-century um, design pottery footed relish or bread dish. Wow this is amazing. Um, I can't believe I found this and found it in excellent condition. This is a studio pottery teapot with four cups. So they kind of uh, green tea type cups or Japanese style. So all four cups are matching the teapot and I gotta tell you teapots in pottery are very difficult to make because you have to 
add the handle you have to add a functioning spout but this one is glazed on the inside as well it's self straining and that's not easy oops and that's not easy to make <laughs> it really isn't so whoever made this and it's not marked anywhere I looked there's no stamp not marked the glaze on it is really really pretty it's obviously coming from a studio no idea who made this thing but it's got the matching four cups and boy oh boy the spout is in excellent condition very often you go to the store and you're like oh I love this teapot it's the best I've ever seen and then poof right there there's a chip this one is not chipped it's like brand new it's absolutely stunning so I don't know why it was at the goodwill but i grabbed it and i'm going to put it up on the etsy shop if the cups were different i probably would keep it i'm not a fan of these cups because there's not a lot of beverage you can put in there but i just want to point out this part here see there's a blue glaze but then there's the part here that's not glaze it's a little bit rough so when you hold it it's really helping you keep the cup in your hand it doesn't slide off your fingers beautiful item I love this so I did some research and I kind of knew this was a big deal this is a 1960s Otagiri Japan horizon teapot with its four uh, cups and it came in two variation this one which is the regular English teapot and then they had the other one that was the Japanese uh, teapot with the handle the bamboo handle on the top and I just checked on Etsy and somebody is selling the Japanese one for $160 with the four cups. I'm not going to sell it for that much, but it, I found not the Holy Grail, but something that's a pretty big deal and it's like brand new. I'm so happy. But that is an Otagiri Horizon. So, you know, you got to research the stuff, all right? It takes a while. That's why sometimes you don't see any videos because I spent the whole day researching stuff doing image reversing and whatnot so pretty happy with this find this is cool this is a westmoreland satin blue also known as frosted blue it's got a melon shape at the bottom it's a lace edging it's basically a candy or relish dish whichever one you want to use it for you can also put some uh, dried flowers in it it's in really good condition there's only like a few little scratches but they at the bottom the blue is intact it's got a little beading um, on the edges you can find those I've never seen it in blue actually uh, any satin blue I never find them I always find the mill glass version found some pink ones but whenever you find one that has the lace edging like this there's always a chip there's always a little bead that's off or something broke over here because they are very fragile so that's gonna be a pain to pack but pretty pretty neat and it's beautiful in the light I don't know if you can see better in the light yeah so that's a nice find I'm, I was happy to find this one um, same place Cowtown New Jersey thrift shop little Mother's Day or Christmas gift for your mom mother's love is the greatest gift this is a Gardinger um, and company porcelain plate and not super expensive um, these are like little trinket type gifts, but it's in excellent condition. It's got platinum on the edges and let me tell you there's no scratch nothing not even on the bottom It was never used for anything. So I guess somebody got it as a gift and was like me not keeping it So yep putting it up on Etsy. It's not gonna be a lot of money. I don't think I'm gonna charge more than 20 bucks for it. We'll see. This is an L.E. Smith glass company Amberina Eagle ashtray. So ashtrays are a thing of the past, I believe, but this one is for cigars. And it's got this beautiful Amberina color, which is known as being a gold of to red, orange, amber color. You see the mix here? It has the American Eagle on top of it. So anyone who's a collector of Americana is going to love this. And I gotta tell you, in the light, oh gorgeous. Look at this. So you can even put it on display um, and if you have a little candle behind it it would look really really neat but anyway it's nine inches really heavy Alice Smith does beautiful glass this one is probably from the 60s maybe 70s beautiful condition no chip um, really really like this actually 
I like the design. It looks beautiful in person. It really does. The colors are stunning on this. So lately I've been finding a lot of Andrea by Sidek and Sidek is an American um, porcelain maker. They did a lot of figurines in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and the two that I have in my dining room if you remember are by um, Andrea by Sidek and Andrea is actually his daughter and that was the name of the line but back in the 80s they did this and this is a series that they had uh, created they are basically reproduction of 18th century Sevres, manufacture de Sevres porcelain. So if you remember my trip to France and going to the Fontainebleau Museum and all of the porcelain in China that Napoleon had was from the manufacture de Sevres. They are very well known for the porcelain and hand painted work and a lot of it is pretty much what you see here which is the gilded um, scrolls with the floral with a background in blue and pink and yellow different colors but very very romantic in terms of design and this is one of the design original design from Sev and what they did is that they reproduced them and created a self collection um, and you see it says inspired by 18th century self porcelain so this is made in Japan it's really really good high-end porcelain this is not cheap stuff I mean it's got some good weight to it it could be used as a little trinket um, tray put your ring your bracelet your earrings whatever or you just leave it on the coffee table um, put a couple of candies whatever you want to do with it but it's in excellent absolute excellent conditions really beautiful design and my camera doesn't give very good um, close-ups but this is just really really pretty these are 1960s made in Japan stoneware uh, cups. They're fooded. Usually you find them without the foot. It says Japan at the bottom. Designs is real pretty. And each one is different. So I have uh, red flowers with poppies. We have some kind of daisies here. A little bit more of um, burnt orange type foliage here. And then the little blue ones. And the design is on both sides of each mug in perfect condition and I gotta tell you there's um, a little bit of luster wear on the edges you can't really see it on camera but it's uh, it's very evident like you can maybe I don't know yeah can you see it a little bit of luster wear on the rim and the handle and again they are fluted so very stable I like these these are really pretty okay so now we're entering the realm of Toby's picks there's two items the first one is this 1950s cookie jar um, now I've found it a lot on the internet and people are asking for astronomical uh, amount of money for them and I've noticed that a lot of them what they've done is that they've scraped all of the red or they've spray painted them and I'm keeping it in its original vintage used condition see the red is coming off because people have been using it for cookies and he's the cutest little thing isn't he all right so you put the cookies inside it says cookie panda he's got this little uh face of uh, i'm sorry because he's eating a cookie but when you turn him around you notice that he's hiding another one this is by price import japan it says the sticker underneath it it's got a little bee right here and another one right here if you collect pandas or cookie jar um this guy's for you so i have to figure out how i'm going to price it because I really suspect that the other guys that I've seen out there have modified the hat and some of them they want almost 40 bucks without the hat so I don't know figure it out later on but anyway so that's one of Tubby Speak and this one we found at a antique store um, down shore in New Jersey so it's um, you never find those old cookie jars at the regular Goodwill you gotta go to really really remote areas but I think it's really cute 